Hello and welcome back. We're having a look at this great group of models today which make up the Nightmail set. I don't have the box set as it stands but I do have all the models which make up the set and Paul Thompson suggested it in one of his comments a couple of weeks ago so thank you very much Paul. It's a very interesting group of models and makes a very striking set. It must have been very exciting to get one of these and they were available between 1970 and 72. Got that great English electric there, a mail coach, a sleeper coach, and we've got a Mark II brake at the end, which is illuminated. Really excellent group of models. We're just gonna have a swift look at the 1970 catalog here. Another one of Mr. Cuneo's fantastic images, edition 16. We have a swift look at the back. There is a dealer stamp present. We've got GW Sands, cycle dealer and repairer, Wharf Street. Sorry, Bridge, and these wonderful images of these plastic model kits back there. They really do look terrific, don't they? So we'll just flip back around to the front and we'll, we'll open up to page number 15, I think is the page we're looking for. And there, there is the set. So 1970 is the year that this group of models was drawn together, although the models were available separately earlier than that. So we've got the, the Type 3 English Electric there. We've got a, a mail coach in, in the blue and grey livery, sleeper coach there in the centre. And we've got the Mark II brake with lights at the back there, although it doesn't look illuminated in that picture, does it? So uh, it is a, an impressive looking set, a great group of models. I believe the mail coach wasn't selling so well after they'd changed from the maroon version to this version. Maybe that's why they included it in the set. And I've got the wonderful apple green flying scotsman up there with peculiar coloured teak coaches there i think that's a printing error the printing in this catalogue isn't terribly good it's very muted in in places we'll pop that down and we'll have a look at this very fragile price list from the same year we'll just grab it from there i think we've seen this list before this is january 1970 it really is very fragile and we've got the the train sets up here and there we go, we've got RS604, Nightmail. And then we've got the, the page it's on. And then we've got the price in new money there, it's £8.75. And then old money there, 175 shillings. That, that's quite a lot of money, I think. It's a rather expensive trend set. If we look below it there, the, uh, the Flying Scotsman set there, it, it's also Quite, quite a reassuringly expensive, isn't it? So eight pounds 47 and a half pence and 169 shillings and six. So very, very, very expensive sets, I think, by the looks of it. Very, very fragile, this, this price list. A little bit missing on the corner there. So I'll pop that down and we'll have a, a swift look at the old locomotive. I say these were available se separately. This first came along in 66 in that wonderful green livery with, without the yellow ends, which I think we've, we've seen in the earlier video. I think that's a terrific detailing on there. They say they had plans to put lights in this and possibly an illuminous head code, but I don't think that ever, ever came to pass. So all the models we see today are un unboxed items I have. So they, they just sort of came to me individually and loose as it were now this one did have a very poor motor and it, i believe it is running quite nicely now um, and i have made a, an adaption to the motor to uh, to make it uh, run better if you see the insert picture there those bearings they tend to disintegrate and they let the armature run at an uneven angle to to uh, the pole pieces and the gears I've just taken out the very large securing screw from the base of the model to uh, separate the, the body and the chassis. We've got this lovely brass tube here as a spacer to keep the body the right distance from, from the chassis and, and prevent damage, I imagine. You could, you over tighten it, you, you'd squeeze the whole thing together. We'll pop that to one side. So there's the, the chassis of this wonderful model, a double weight on the end. And I think we were saying this, this model first came along in um, 66 in green and then in 68 it changed to uh, the blue we see it here today and i believe them the model went on with uh, some minor variations right through until around 1984. i uh, we can see the 
that motor again. And as I mentioned earlier, I've made some adaptions to it. I don't know if you, if you look just behind the wheel there, you can see that plastic tube. And I've just put that on, on the base of the bearing just to try and keep the bearing in the, the right place. And again, if you look at the insert picture on the right there, you'll be able to see from another angle, you can see there as well. And that's hugely improved it. It just wouldn't, it would just cough and splutter down the track, make a terrific racket. And now it actually runs. It's still a little noisy, but it is quite smooth in running terms now. So we've got the wiring for the extra pickups there. All the way through there. You can see those. We see the saw them before. D-shaped couplings on the back. Let's just have a look. I think we saw this before as well. Triangle's name, the model number down there, R751. Built in Britain, you can see this model's been apart a number of times. Look at all the scuffing around the screw there. And the base plate has been adapted as well. I think uh, in, the, in the early 70s, they, they changed instead of the countersunk, countersunk screw into the base to, to hold it flat onto the bottom of the model. They, they filled in the countersunk and put that slightly different screw so they sit proud of the surface, but it made the base set stronger, so less susceptible to cracking and a little bit more pressure available. And I believe this model with the extra pickups is, is probably um, more early mid 70s rather than early 70s so again it really does hugely improve the running so we'll just pop that down and have a, a quick look at the chassis there's that great label there telling you not to unscrew that nut but to take out the spring clip to remove the bogey but i'm not going to remove it on this occasion we've seen a motor like this quite recently we'll just pop that down and have a swift look at the body and we looked at the body before, you can see some sort of striations in, in the plastic moulding there. That was that one a scuff? Uh, we've got scuffs and stri striations in the moulding with this model right the way along it some places. There's a little bit of infill in the moulding there. I don't think that's dirt, I think that's just either the paint or, or the from the moulding. It wasn't quite, didn't quite release quite nicely. So we'll have a look down the side there and see some of that same effect down there as well. Again, there is marks which appear to the eye to be sort of within the plastic and when you shine a light on them, some of them are obviously, obviously scuffs. But uh, it's seen a bit of work, this model hasn't hasn't uh, sat idly. There's a little chip off the, the yellow work of the nose. And I say that I have read that there were plans to put an a, a luminous um, head code and possibly lights, but I think uh, plans were shelved due to increasing production costs. So it is a fairly good model. And there can't have been that much wrong with the mold really in terms of detail if they managed to keep it in production up until the mid 1980s. Now we're just going to open points number five and bring her onto the passing loop, which is where I've got the mail collection and delivery apparatus set up on the layout due to space restrictions. I've also read in the past that the best results when picking up and dropping off mail that you need to run at between half and three quarter power. So we're gonna pick up the pace a little here. There we go, successful pick up there, through the point work, and back round through points number five, and we'll drop off the mail at the other side of the layout here. Just before we have a look at the coaches, we'll have a look at the uh... The Type 3 is a solo model there, R751, and somebody has already marked that off with an X, it wasn't me. And I think if we read across here, it was in new money £3.65, and in old money there, it was 73 shillings, so quite an expensive model by itself. Now let's have a look at the, the passenger coaches there. So we're, we're looking for the, the Intercity Blue great first coach there, R723. And I believe that comes in at £1.35, 27 shillings, if I'm reading that correctly. I think I've followed that across rightly there. And then let's see if we can find the uh, the sleeper car there, R339, blue second class sleeper, page 13, in uh, new money, it's 82 and a half pence, and it's 16 shillings and six in, in old money. We'll just pop that down. And we'll have a have a swift look at the, the coaches here. So I think we'll uh, start with the sleeper coach. 
So these came along in 69 and they lasted till 72, but as solo models, I believe they vanished in 71. Production just remaining to serve the sets from what I've seen. You see, this is a, a fairly battered model. I've seen better days using the same standard chassis as we've seen on the, the coaches last week and a few times before. So we've got pinpoint axles and, and plastic wheels there with quite interesting side mouldings. So we'll just have a swift look at that and it does have a very unique roof there. Quite a nice thing. I'll just have the one of these, the, the early ones with the grey roofs. I, I have a couple of them I could make up quite a nice change. So I say the, the change to uh, these dark grey roofs happened when they swapped from electric blue to the rail blue we see here. I'll have a look at the Mark II. Terrific coach with lights. Bit of a gimmick, but we, we all like these things from time to time. Again, this one's been around the track a few times. Grey roof beginning to wear away on the paint there. And then we can see the, the end detail there, just try and get that in focus. So that's a separately fitted part. And we've got some detail in the plastic moulding there. We've got seating detail, you can just see the, the light bulb there through the, the guard's window. And again, detail the same on the other end. The buffers are part of the underframe moulding, or the chassis, sorry. And now we've got that very uh, Heath Robinson style pickup on the bottom there, but it does work. It does cause it to flicker a little. We've got Made in Great Britain, two great big securing screws. So if you have a look at the insert picture, you can see the, the lighting rig on the inside. Again, it's all very, very basic, very simple, but creates such a lovely effect. Just jump back to the page of coaches and we'll have a look at the operating mail mail set here it's a r402m i'm not quite sure what the m stands for i know it was adapted from super 4 to a system 6 track or maybe it was a universal item and could be used on both and this shows mail apparatus in sort of gray there in a gray mail bag but i don't have the have the sets out here just have the coach so quite an interesting group of group of pictures and i said that the printing is quite dull in this this catalog is it's quite hard to see. So we'll pop that down and uh, have a look at the price list. So the mail coach in, in this format was was lasted from 69 through till uh, 72. Let's just see if we can find that. It's in with the passenger coaches and there we go. R402M, blue operating Royal mail coach set. And again, we're indicating page 13 and from what I can read, if I trace that across while I'm looking through the camera or the phone here, it's uh, £1.85. And is that uh, 37 shillings? So quite, quite a sum of money, I, I suppose, for, for a set, a little set like that. Because you've got no track with it, it just had the, the clip-in parts to the, to the rails. So we'll just pop that down. And here's the mail coach. It's been around the block a bit this and I have uh, taken it apart to add some weight if you look at the, the, the inside, the insert picture, sorry. So you can see we've got some scuffing here. We've got a little chip to the roof. So end detail, quite nice. I believe this, this detailing, it, it goes back quite some time to the earlier coaches and I think the mechanism is largely unchanged, although this mechanism was quite reluctant initially and I've had to add weight to the coach to keep it on the rails it kept bouncing off on the on the operating ramps and when it came to me it didn't have this red red piece in here it's just a piece of uh, red card i've cut out and stuck on there or paper and i believe it should have been on there if you look at the uh, the catalog pictures i don't know whether it ever had anything printed on it i think it's supposed to be mailbox quite interesting detail through there and then we can see the, the operating arms on the base of the coach. Interestingly, I don't think this ever got pinpoint axles, so it's got closed axle boxes, but it does have sleeved wheels on, on, the, on the single metal axle. D-shaped couplings there. Let's flip that around. And we can see Triang, and then Made in England. Quite an interesting thing. It's an amazing thing to have lasted so long in the catalog. 
although there is many hours of play value to be had with, with these items. I've just turned down the lights a little there so we can see the, the lights in that Mark II brake blazing away there. Really great item. They do create a lot of drag, a lot of friction when you're running them with all those pickups underneath on the bogies. It's, it's quite crude, but a great effect, isn't it? Well, I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks so much again for watching. It's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.